All right, so today I wanna to show you guys some of my royalty checks, at least some of my royalty statements, some screenshots from it, because I wanna give you an idea of the range of royalties that you can actually expect to earn in this business. Now, this is not a guarantee that you'll earn what I'm earning. Um, I know some producers that do way better than me, and they've shared with me some of their awesome success, and I've seen what they've done. I know a lot of producers that are struggling and are barely earning anything. And so it's it's a large range and there's no guarantees in this business. And as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, a lot of this is out of our control, right? Whether or not you're serving the company correctly, whether or not the library has a use for your music, whether or not their clients need your music, right? We don't need to get into all of that. So this is just a big disclaimer for you guys to know that I am not guaranteeing you these kind of results. I'm just letting you see what I'm seeing on my end so you can say, okay, that seems to be promising. There could be a future in this for me or that doesn't seem like enough. And I don't know if that's really what we can look forward to in this business. Maybe this isn't for me. So I want to just give you a little bit of transparency there so you guys can decide that for yourself. Uh, right before we jump into it, though, I want to make a reminder uh, announcement that we are offering licensing opportunities in Sync Academy now. So all members that join Sync Academy can pitch to our music library or our music library licensing opportunities. Previously, this is something that I only allowed my syndicate members as kind of my inner circle mentorship group to do. But now we've opened it up to everybody in Sync Academy. This month we have two opportunities going on. One is for trailerized remixes. Um, so it's, it's a really big kind of trailer orchestral sort of sound you're going for. The other one is sort of a, a cyberpunk synthwave album that um, this library owner wants to put together. So both of them are really fun. It could be really challenging. So if those you know, genres seem interesting or um, enticing to you. We have plenty of spaces on these opportunities. We have plenty of spaces in Sync Academy this month for you guys to join. And the link is below if you wanna learn more about that. And we'd love to have you join us and maybe take a shot at it and hopefully maybe get some of your first tracks out there licensed and on your way to earning your own royalty checks, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with these. Um, I'm gonna first show you the really cool stuff, the, the the bigger side of the range, the the more like exciting parts of this business, and then we'll get into maybe the more depressing parts of it, because um, there are definitely both sides of that. So let's go ahead and get into the, the fun stuff and the big stuff first. Uh, this is actually my single biggest individual placement I've ever received in my career, okay? So this is one I talked about in a video about a month or two ago on my channel, but it was this one right here for $2,800, a television um, placement um, for a track called Suck It Up out of Germany. Now I've received royalties from Germany for many years, but I have never received this many, <laughs> this this number, okay? Usually what I see is all these other numbers, you know, 30, 25 bucks is kind of the higher I'd see on these individual placements. And then down in these, you know, dollar ranges or under a dollar range is pretty normal actually for a lot of my international royalties. But once in a while, something like this just pops up and it's like, wow. And it's really exciting, but of course, do I know why? Do I have any information as to why this individual placement earned this much? No clue. I have no idea other than that I know it was in Germany, it was on TV, and that was the name of the, the track. So I don't know how many times it played, I don't know what network, I don't know what show, I don't know anything about it, okay? So that's a sort of, you know, good pro and con essentially of this business that it's not very transparent. But that's a really, really cool, awesome thing that can happen to you if you stick with this long enough. This doesn't happen every quarter. It doesn't happen every royalty check. Like I said, I've been in this business now 14 years. This is the largest individual royalty I've received, okay? It's not the largest check I received, but it's the largest individual one placement from one track on a play, on a royalty statement that I've ever received. So that's really cool. Previous to this, the largest one I had was $1,700 for an Al Jazeera promo, actually. It was like a commercial they were running for some news uh, show that they had. Believe it or not, Al Jazeera paid really, really well. So that was my previous record, and now I'm at 2,800. So really, really cool, very exciting stuff. So let's look at a decent cable channel that I've received placements. And I think this was... This one's probably from an older royalty check of mine, I believe. This is from Bravo, you know, um, not like obviously the most popular cable channel on earth, but it's known, obviously, Vanderpump Rules. I don't know anything about this show. I think, I actually honestly don't know anything about it. I don't know the content. I don't know what it's about, nothing, okay. But as you can see, background instrumental all over the place. That's really what about 90% of my royalty checks have been, background instrumental, B-I, B-I, B-I. I know a lot of you guys or a lot of producers think they have to get those feature placements or jingle placements. They have to get these big placements in order to make a living with this. I'm telling you, I was able to make a living at it and B-I is pretty much all over my royalty statements, okay? And I've only had literally a handful of featured 
you know, tracks or anything like that. I haven't had a jingle yet. I haven't had anything like that. But still, really decent money can be earned through these background instrumental placements. Um, these numbers you see on the side here are how many times it aired. So obviously, the larger the number, generally, you'll see some larger royalties because it's obviously been used more. So more, more value has been pumped into this uh, network's show. Um, and you can see how long it's been uh, placed. Like the, this is the individual length of the placement. So 42 seconds all the way down to, what was this the shortest one? I think seven seconds here. So you obviously want to kind of aim more for the higher end, like over a minute here. You want to kind of go for that side. But of course, you look at it, it's over a minute, but it only aired one time. So therefore, my royalties are, you know, five bucks. So it's not that much. Um, it's, it's just kind of all over the place with the variables that can determine what you earn here. Okay, so I wanted to give you a look at that one. Let's look at NBC. This is definitely one from my one of my older royalty checks. This is basically from uh, America's Got Talent statement that I received, or a placement I received, and uh, three different placements on three different um, um, episodes, as you can see, 921, 923, and 925. And, you know, a little, all of them are a little under, um, uh, under a minute, essentially. But network TV, right? So NBC, one of the big networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, in general, not always, don't want to make sure, make sure you guys are aware of this. In general, you're going to do a little better with those ones. As you can see, 100, 200, and 200 bucks. So 500 bucks basically on um, one show that was using my track three times. So that's really not, not bad at all. That's a really, really nice uh, placement there. So that's kind of what you can see with NBC. Um, let's go to ABC, another network, and then we'll come back to MTV. So this is an uh, ABC placement I received. Not as good, not as big, obviously, as... Um, the NBC one, but you know, you see my placements are a little bit um, shorter, right? Oops, you're not seeing the actual amount of money there. There you go. My my placements are a little bit shorter on these ones, right? We're not up to a minute at all. Um, you know, some of these are pretty long. You can see we have our large numbers about the same 204, 205 areas, all that kind of stuff. And some of these only 92, 113, which you know only, right? But still, um, you know, a lot of this stuff comes down to um, the length of your placement. This is why I really stress for you guys. You want to kind of shoot for trying to get as long of placements as you possibly can because it takes all that work to get in front of the right music editor or supervisor. So you want to do all you can to try to create a very licensable track to extend your placement so you get longer than this, hopefully. But still, you know, it's not bad. Over 100 bucks for an ABC placement, essentially, with a couple of my cues, which is kind of kind of nice, right? But um, we, we talk about this kind of stuff in Sync Academy all the time in terms of building your track, providing options for your editors, making sure that you're creating uh, transitions, getting dynamics there. Those things that might you might not realize, you're like, well, what's the point of all this? This is the point because when you don't do that stuff, you'll probably find that you'll get short, short, tiny little placements which don't result in a lot of income for yourself. And if you're already putting in the work, you're already hustling at this, why not go all the way, right? Now let's go back to MTV. Um, this one did pretty well for me. Um, as you can see, not all cable networks are gonna, um, or I should say not all networks are going to outperform cable because obviously here with NPD, uh, I did very, very well. And as you can see, we had a really long placement here, uh, three minutes and 16 seconds. I don't know if that's my record. That's definitely up there though. It's a very, very long record. Um, and not a lot of re-airings, not a lot of um, um, you know broadcast essentially, but pretty, pretty cool. All BI, all background instrumental, but as you can see, pretty, pretty intense, big uh, royalty amounts there, $200, $150 essentially. So that's pretty nice with MTV. So there's something there. Now, that's um, the fun stuff. <laughs> Let's get into some of the not so encouraging stuff. Let's look at Disney Plus, right? A hot new streaming platform, lots of excitement going on, lots of new movies and shows, all that kind of stuff, right? Should be cool to get some placements there. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what's going on in the streaming world right now. And I think this was, this might've been my last most recent royalty statement. It went within one of the last two, okay. So obviously getting Disney fairy tale wedding placements and getting one placement there. Um, and you know, some of them are a little bit older, over a minute, a minute 20 there, uh, 52 seconds there, but some of them are shorter. But as you can see, 43 cents, 10 cents, three cents, right? So this is what we're looking at right now with the streaming world. It's not very encouraging. It's not a lot of money. Um, they're, they're, from what I've heard from the PRRs, why these are very low, is they're claiming that the viewers, the eyeballs on these are just not matching what the TV world is. So right now, um, they're saying that you're basically getting paid a fair rate, but there's just not as many eyeballs on the streaming yet. But once more and more eyeballs get there, these royalties will pick up. You'll see more. That's, that's essentially what I have heard whether or not that's true, I don't know. I, I feel like streaming now has become more popular, but I don't actually don't, I don't really don't know the numbers. 
how many people are still watching TV, cable, network TV, that kind of thing, as opposed to who's turning on just their Apple TV or their Roku and just watching streaming now. So, but that's that's that, okay? Let me show you a kind of a cool, I guess sort of a cool, but maybe a depressing depending on how you look at it. Let me show you first my, um, um, well, actually, I, I missed one here. Here, um, here's local TV placements. So when you get some of your, some of your placements, sorry, we got, we're kind of getting out of order here. Sometimes you get placements from local channels that are not obviously inter, are not international, definitely not international, but definitely not um, uh, national. So it's not like a national show or a national campaign that you're part of. But it's like you know local here, Access Hollywood, that kind of a thing. Um, and I guess Ritmo Deportivo. I don't know much about that track, but here's some of my local television placements and. A little bit on the lower side, right? So these are like six bucks, five bucks, a dollar, that kind of thing. So not not tons of income that's coming in your way. Lots of re-airings, and some of them are, you know, some of them are pretty short. You know, sixteen seconds. Um, this one's longer. This one's a minute forty-five. But you know, I got five bucks for that. So I mean, it, you know, showing that these are basically not like maybe huge, massive. Um, um, rated uh tv shows it's probably fair that i'm basically earning a smaller amount on that but anyways going back to this example i wanted to show you okay so i'm going to show you some royalties I, i've received from the kardashians okay so this is what i received from getting some placements on keeping up with the kardashians as you can see not bad uh one was almost 500 dollars there uh primarily as you can see because it was a long placement over a minute long and it aired 47 times so with those two elements right there you can see okay that makes sense why that one works out the other one's not so many times but you know i'm very happy obviously that that was something that um, did well for me with that show. Now that was a TV placement. Okay, this is a TV royalty statement you are looking at here. Let's look at what I got when it went to streaming. Again, part of the disappointing, depressing side of this industry. As you can see there, we're talking about dollars now, right? We're talking about very, very few dollars. So that this shows you how many times it was streamed, right? So 350,000 times, all that kind of stuff. So they are claiming though that the reason why your TV royalties are way bigger is because people on TV, there's millions, there's a lot more people watching it than they are eyeballs on the streaming platforms essentially watching it. So they're keeping track of how many times people are streaming it and looking at it and all that kind of stuff. So that's what you can see though. So you go from like a $500 royalty check you know, with one of your replacements on a TV network, and then you see your streaming, you know, this, the, obviously the show just went to streaming, and you're at a fraction of that. You're at literally less than a, a percent, essentially, of a lot of the, what you're earning there. So that's that. That's just where the industry is. That's just, you know, maybe things will change in the future, but we'll see. Now, I wanted to show you, though, um, hopefully this is the most encouraging part, when I first got started with BMI, I'm gonna show you this. This is actually the first, the end of the first royalty check I received um, through BMI. As you can see there, my royalty checks back then were four pages long, okay? So I literally was getting a couple of placements, literally a handful, maybe five or 10. The first page was just all my personal information. The last page is the summary. So, I mean, obviously I had this little placement here, but really it was like two pages worth of, of placements. So not a lot. It was me just getting started um, and really just kind of really hustling and trying to get my stuff together. But I wanted to show you that as time went on, this is the most recent one I received. And I want to show you that the, the actual length um, of my royalty check went up to 140 pages long. Okay, so from four pages to 140, that's basically my plan for this industry. This is essentially how I've been able to create full-time income is I've always seen this as a numbers game, okay? You can't get too attached to any one individual track. You can't get too attached to any one individual royalty statement or one individual placement or even one individual library sometimes. In order to get to 140 pages or more, and this is maybe small for some sync licensing producers that have been at it for as long as I have, but in order to get to at least this number, it's basically this idea of letting go of a lot of what you can't control. That's just my secret I can give to you guys. I knew that in order to just constantly build up these royalties, because some of them are gonna be very disappointing and gonna be less than a penny or less than three cents, and some are gonna be $2,800, but in order to get to the point where this could possibly be my full-time income, I better have a large variety of placements coming in every single quarter. And some are gonna do great, some are not gonna do so great. But on average, I'm gonna constantly build, be building up my royalties, constantly building up my catalog, and get myself into a point where I can do this full time. So that was what I kind of understood within a few years of being in this industry. And that's why it takes a lot of faith in yourself to realize, okay, I gotta keep my head down. I essentially have to just trust and, and keep going with this process of constantly working on my craft, constantly trying to focus on working with the right libraries. And hopefully, 
doing everything I possibly can to steer success my way, but also accepting the humility that a lot of it is out of our control. Parts of it are kind of depressing, the streaming side of things, right? But it's still a promising, awesome, amazing industry to be a part of. So that's the message I wanted to share with you guys. Those are the screenshots I wanted to share with you. Please let me know what you thought, if this was helpful, if this was motivational, if this was depressing. Do you feel more excited? Do you feel less excited? I wanna know where you guys are at after watching this video. So please do leave your comment below under this video. Thank you so much.